Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another Problem Solved. Well, today we have a leaking washing machine. You can look underneath the rear lid, rear of the lid, and see it dripping there. It's actually a good, clear picture. A uh, little bit of searching online, and uh, that particular part is called a water intake valve. The only thing I could think of where it could potentially be a replaceable part that you might be able to fix. So first things first, we're gonna unplug the washing machine. Always disconnect electric before you start working on anything. And then the very next thing, uh, next important item, uh, for safety reasons as well as precautionary, you don't wanna flood, you wanna turn off the spigots, the valves. Um, the first one was the cold, the second one there I'm doing now this one here is the hot. You make sure the cold and the hot are off. The next thing we'll do is we'll actually start disconnecting the uh, cold and the hot water lines from the back of the washing machine. That is the hot water line. I did not have the valve completely closed. It's a really old valve. Uh, I don't want to break it. I didn't get around to replacing that yet. Um, but it, you know, needed a, another quarter turn or so. Um, my water lines, uh, as you can see, at least the cold water line is old and uh, rusted. Um, they should break free pretty easily. I just wanted to make sure I didn't uh, cause a leak. So I used the channel locks pliers. You want to disconnect both of those lines and set them up somewhere. It's always a good idea. You should probably have a towel down in the work area. Uh, you are gonna get water. It's inevitable to get a little bit of a leak. Uh, just wanna cover quickly the tools that you're gonna need. Um, you're gonna need a nut driver. That's there on the left, the black dri nut driver it's called. Um, that fits perfectly on the screws that are on the back of the uh, washing machine. You're also going to want a screwdriver, pliers, maybe a painter's knife, uh, something to kind of pry up, and a channel locks um, probably would help, although not required. These are nuts or with a screw head, Phillips head on it as well. So it's your choice. Um, the easiest thing is a nut driver. Um, if you don't have that Phillips screwdriver will work and uh, we're gonna take all those screws in the back that I was just pointing to off I think there was one two three four, seven in total you want to set them down somewhere make sure you have seven don't lose them there's two that are longer than any others um, keep note of where the nuts go uh, that that you take out once the nuts are removed, this is very sharp. I would definitely recommend using gloves. I didn't, but I did this already, taking a look and investigating what part could be broken. Um, it's very sharp sheet metal, so you definitely want to make sure you're very careful, and gloves are certainly recommended. You, you just basically wiggle that free, and you can see, um, you can see basically where it, uh, the tabs are kind of lock into place in the back of the uh, washing machine. Now you're gonna to wanna to use a scraper, a painted scraper, putty knife, um, something that you're gonna pry underneath carefully um, to lift up the um, top portion, or the control panel of the uh, washing machine. And if you take a look in here, you can actually see the kind of you know hooks the way it hooks into um, the base or um, actual top of the machine. Now this is the part here. This is called the water inlet valve or water intake valve. It's a one piece unit. And I searched around to see if I could just replace the cold side or something, but that's the part. I'll put the part number in the description, but that's the part number there, uh, the exact replacement. Uh, will come with that part number on it, or it should. Um, 
However, the part numbers change. They have newer ones. It's the same part, and uh, usually a manufacturer's website or OEM website will show you the equivalent. It's very simple to replace this item. Uh, I'm looking at now the wires, and you want to look at this one wire and this one connector is all you have to deal with as far as the wires go. So uh, you want to always carefully remove a connector and always compare your replacement item uh, to the original. Take a look at tags, take a look at the actual connector before you start disconnecting things. This is a pretty straightforward, fairly simple, uh, simple problem to solve if this is your problem. If you are leaking water from that particular area, that specific area on the washing machine, um, this is an Amana model, but uh, it's Whirlpool basically. Um, you want to use a, uh, it's called a, a star or security bit or a T, T bit. Um, I forget offhand, I think it was a T20. I will put that in the description, the exact size bit. Yeah, so I did check and it, it is a T20 um, bit. You just want to insert that into your nut driver um, and you loosen up these two screws. Um, once you take out these screws, and as long as you disconnected the connector, the electrical connector, that's pretty much the extent of the um, removal. Uh, obviously installation is the reverse of the removal um, just always take care when working with these small screws and, and nuts um, not to lose them uh, especially dropping them into a place where you actually never get them out from again this particular uh, <clears throat> driver bit is magnetic I would definitely highly recommend that but still be very careful so you want to just squeeze the top of the connector, the clip um, will detach itself and then you have to gently pull up, um, wiggle it out carefully. Take note of the routing of the wires and uh, carefully remove everything. Once both of those T20 nuts are out, you can basically apply a little bit of force uh, pull out on that. Uh, that uh, water inlet uh, valve um, take the new one and you just double check the look of it I did that already prior to the video compared uh, how it looked once I got it before removing anything but it fits in place uh, perfectly this is an exact uh, replacement OEM um, the part number everything is exact um, once it's in place you take a look make sure the holes line up um, as far as the wire um, make sure that that is routed where the original went so you should always take a picture or videos of anything you work on prior to taking it apart and working on it I make it a habit of doing that and it saved me countless times because you can't remember everything, where everything went, where everything came from. This particular uh, problem is a simple, simple one to solve. There's not too many moving parts, places where you could go wrong, but it's always a good habit. Once you insert the electrical connector um, and have the wires routed properly, you want to pick up your uh, T20 screw and uh, you're going to start actually uh, installing the screws and tightening up the replacement uh, intake valve. Um, again, extreme caution, uh, dangling a screw over uh, any equipment you're working on. Um, it'll save you so many headaches. Um, you don't want to lose a screw somewhere. It uh, make, uh, makes a, a big headache for you which you don't really need to have um, so once you carefully install those two screws that's the extent of the replacement of the water intake valve the only thing left is to button everything else back up and uh, test her out okay we're just gonna finish tightening up the screws quick 
to mount the uh, water intake valve and we'll move on and uh, next we're gonna um, put the control panel back on you can see how that hooks in two sides hook in um, on the base of the washing machine and then there's some clips some metal kind of spring clips um, that you apply force on the front of the control panel um, kind of rock it in tilt it in and uh, tilt the front towards you and they should snap into place careful you don't lose them I dropped one of them it came right off um, and be careful removing it I also broke um, one of the little hooks um, this metal back plate should have taken note and taken pictures in a video of how it exactly was on you got to watch for those intake um, threads and this tab uh, be very careful and insert them properly this tab here has, has to go behind the plate that's still on the washing machine the one you didn't take off um, it's a little bit tricky to get in place um, but it tucks behind and make sure that this power cable is routed like through the hole and there you see how the tab goes behind the base plate that's already uh, still existing on the washing machine um, once it's tucked in tight there's two tabs on either side in the back um, that have to also line up and that'll help you ensure that all the screws line up you have to do a little bit of wiggling get everything nice and tight in place and uh, if it's not fitting double check what you're doing because something is not aligned properly then you simply uh, continue with the installation of all the screws you took out taking note of where they go um, remember there's two larger ones um, longer I should say I believe this is one of them um, take note as they come out which one goes where um, and you won't have any problems I believe the two larger ones go on the lower left and right hand side of this back plate and all the others are the same size and those just go around um, and that should do it as long as you've got everything in place as so um, the back plate should be on and then we just continue with the next step which would be cold or hot I did the cold first uh, now you grab the hot um, water line and uh, just tighten it up make sure you don't cross thread it so always use hand hand tighten first and as you're tightening it make sure it's going on straight and and level um, you don't want to cross thread that better to take care and time making sure it's going on if it's too tight going on there could be something wrong once it's secured you want to turn the valve on check for leaks once that water valve is on it will supply water to the machine as long as the valve is working properly you shouldn't have any leaks turn the hot turn the cold check for leaks and then final step put the power back in carefully insert the uh, power cord gather up your tools clean up your workspace um, and make sure you didn't leave anything behind make sure you have everything you started with you didn't leave anything in the machine um, and then uh, the only thing left to do is take a look and as you can see no drips no leaks I went and ran it after this video and everything ran fine there was no leaking afterwards so another problem solved I hope this video helped you I hope you'll subscribe help me continue to make these videos and uh, I hope this really helps save your day uh, save you some time money aggravation uh, I know it did me and I learned a lot so thanks for watching and uh, see you guys next time don't forget t20 it's a t20 uh, security bit star bit